Hey guys, so here we are, we're back on the boat build. Today we're, we're mounting the uh, TH Marine Atlas Micro jack plate. And on this micro jack plate, we're going to mount a Torquedo 2.0. Jeff Little from Torquedo is gonna be here shortly. You kayak guys, you might know Jeff. He got caught up catching some stripers, but uh, he'll be here. And um, he's gonna dial us into some things with Torquedo. But right now, we're gonna get this Atlas micro jack Mounted on the back of the boat. <laughs> Center hole. There ain't enough. Oh, there's just enough right there. You want it as high as possible. Okay. Your motor is going to sit on top of this bracket, so you want to get that as high as you can because that shaft is so long. Yep. So while I drink this delicious Founders beer, Dave is going to prep the opening where the Atlas jack plate is going to mount. We're going to. Clean it up with some acetone, scratch off all the debris. The, Jer the Jersey over. scum line? The Jersey scum line. Got to get them good and clean so we can silicone them. Hosnuts. <laughs> Have you had your Hosnuts today? Brian, what's the difference between nuts and hosnuts? Hosnuts are very loud. And they're large. <laughs> Stock report specification? Trust me. No more we, could, we could punch a hole right through this thing if we wanted to. I hope that it's something that provides value to the Hey everybody, and welcome to How to Eat a Wing with Brian DeCarpenter. So what we have here is our standard wing. Dave, what is this? This is a wing. wing. This is where there's two bones in this wing situation, and we're gonna make it no bones. We're gonna bone us. So we reach in here, we grab these nubs, there we go. See this? A little twist, that's it. A little twist, a little turn, and we're out. Don't worry about that. Another twist. We're boneless. Now we go boneless, we go straight for the blue cheese. If you, uh, if you like ranch, Joey Diaz has a message for you. Hey guys, I'm here with Jeff Little from Torquedo and he's gonna help us rig up our Torquedo motor, our Torquedo 2.0. Yep, the Cruise 2.0 is a five horsepower equivalent motor. It's a 2000 watt peak output motor. The version that we have is actually the uh, the tiller version. There's also a remote version where you have, if you have steering forward in the boat, either um, a stick steer or regular steering wheel, and you can set up your, you know, your steering cable, but as this one is the tiller version, uh, we're just going to use this tiller, which is both steers it and then is also the throttle. Since I'm already here, I'll go ahead and hook up the, the tiller. It just slides in to that little notch there, settles down there, and you have your, your uh, data cable here. So the throttle is communicating with the motor. Now, you might ask, great, right, what is it? Was it communicating other than how fast do you want it to go? Something that's pretty interesting about the Torquedo motors, um, every one of them has a GPS receiver in it. In the cruise motors, uh, it's actually in the motor itself. In some of our other uh, motors like the travel motor or the kayak motor, which is the ultralight, the GPS is in the battery. Our battery for this is gonna be the Power 26104. Um, but like I said, the GPS here is in the motor. The reason that's important, with most electric motors, you have, um, you know, I'll say like a trolling motor or, or any other electric motor, you don't have the equivalent of a gas gauge of knowing when are you, you know, are you halfway there or is the, the tank at a quarter? You have no idea. We of, paddled on Sunday. Right. So you understand <laughs> about what, a mile. what it is. Yes. Um, the interesting thing or the good thing about the Torquedo system is it uses the information like it communicates with the, the Power 26104, the battery, to know what percentage, you know, how many watt, watt hours are left in there. Um, 
data of how fast you're going in mile per hour and then whatever your current throttle setting is you always know how far it is that you can go and it'll display on the throttle here your remaining runtime at whatever throttle setting you have it at uh, so that you know you're not going to run out of juice <laughs> you're not going to be left stranded pretty well the other cool thing is that it'll show you um, if you're over you know if, say if you have to go you know 6.4 miles to get back to to your launch and you're going at full speed and it says you have 5.8 miles of, of range remaining you can back off on that until the remaining range on the throttle display climbs up over your 6.2 so you know you get in safely and you can go as fast as you can yep. and hit that you know hit that goal of not running out of power i'll show you some of the other components we have we do have the uh, this is the charger for the um, the Power 26104. Um, this is an on-off switch for the whole system, and we'll we'll hook that up. And then we have one data cable here. So you go ahead and hand, hand me the data cable, and I will start hooking that up. These just have a little little notch there to help you line up the pins with any of these data cables or the main power cable wd-40 is actually the best thing for yep. it <clears throat> if you have ever have a bad connection uh, that is what you want to to do is get a little bit of wd-40 in there okay let's go ahead and hook up your <clears throat> positive and negative Actually says you have 98%. 98% battery? Yeah, and I don't know how long it was sitting. I mean, we've had it for months. Six months. Yeah. Wow. If you look at the angle of this, obviously we're gonna lower it to get it deeper in the water, and that's you know what this is for. But I look at the angle of the of the the motor in relation to the angle of the boat, and right now it's tucked in like this, and yep. that's not what you want. You right. actually want it to be, not, people think it should be straight up and down, but you actually want it back a little bit because once you're under power, there's a little bit of stern squat as it starts moving, and then under power, it's straight up and down, which that propeller is pushing water straight back. Otherwise, as it is right here, it's gonna be sort of tucked in and it's gonna be pushing water down rather than straight back. So. The way to adjust that is this trim adjustment pin here, which I have a little little pin here on the other side. I'm gonna take that out. That's all that is. And cool one spot, right? yeah, we'll try it here and see what happens. And you know, you you run it in different positions, and you you look at your speed. Yeah, is, I mean, is ultimately what it comes you've down to. You've got a speedometer on this thing because it's got a GPS built yep. in. Yep. So yep. there's no guesswork. What your top speed is, you know, you can you can improve it by getting the right trim adjustment. We'll try it like that and see what what kind of speeds we get out of it. Play around with it. This boat is weighted heavy in the back. Yep. I think if I had to do it over, maybe we move the live well forward, but right. I'll just put a lot of tackle on the front. Okay, that works. <laughs> if anyone is, is setting up a Torquedo uh, cruise motor or even an ultralight or travel has any questions, uh, certainly there's, there's a service number, but the easiest way is to pick up your smartphone, hop on YouTube and, you know, there are all these different service videos that explain how to do things. What is that little lanyard for? That's kill switch. Yeah. So here, here we're going, and it's just a magnet, and there. Yeah. So Isn't that wild? You said you have a spare propeller. Yes. Good move. Uh, it's good to get a spare one of these. For sure. You said that you're going to be using this in in areas, so, you know, some shallow areas with stumps and stuff. That's um, generally what we got around here: shallow, muddy, stumpy. I, I run mine in the Susquehanna River. And your rocks. It's rocks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And 
um, what I did to, to protect my investment um, is I got a rock guard built for this. Uh, we can take a look at that here. Yeah, in a moment. I think we should do that. Yep. Um, it's uh, Innovative Sportsman He's, is the, the business that makes the rock guards for these. He, he actually has some made with uh, with the grass cutter as well. He, he did a grass cutter on mine so that when these props gather vegetation, it just chops it. Yeah, so your grass cutters are nice. Under the setup, you can look here. This button on the left is set up and it looks like somebody has set the remaining range to be hours. Uh, you can change it to, I don't even know what that one is. It's some weird German stuff. <laughs> we just change it to kilometers or miles. I like miles, so we're gonna leave it at miles. I'm with miles. Yeah, this is already set on mile per hour. It's the way that it's gonna come is gonna be kilometers per hour, but yep. this one's already on mile per hour. Perfect. And the battery, the battery percentage is on percentage. Here's the cool thing about the lithium batteries though, is that you get to use the full amount of power in it. Whereas a, a lead acid or AGM, over the course of, of using it, it's, its peak power output goes down and down and down and down and down and down. And you kind of know when it's getting close to empty. The lithium, in particular the Torquedo lithium, this 98%, you'll get it down to 1%, and then it's done. But at 1%, if this boat can go 6.4 miles per hour, it'll go 6.4 miles per hour when it's at 1%. And then when it's done, it's done. Wow. So that's different than, than the lead acid setup. What? Um, and what? you can set these up with lead acid batteries and you can set them up with um, non torquedo lithiums. What I've found is that when you get the lead acid AGM batteries down to about 45% of the charge remaining, you can't use that bottom 45%. Like it's just, it just stops at 45%. Yeah. Life is good. Yep. Don't walk into the prop. No. All parts of the system are IP67 rated waterproof. What that means is that, you know, from the battery to the motor to the throttle can submerge in water up to meter up to a meter deep for up to half an hour and no water gets in it so very waterproof system the charger however is ip65 which i forget what the difference is but you can't totally submerge that so where you have mounted which is a key here, piece of information <laughs> where you've mounted it here is is good i mean you're, you're it's not, better yeah you don't want to you know put it somewhere where it's it's going to get soaked or yeah because you leave your plug in the boat protected. and you get a, a a thunderstorm or two while you're off at work doesn't take much to put a few inches of water in the bottom of the boat right. and smoke a brand new charger right i've heard of it happening yeah three hundred dollars down the drain uh, like personal that. experience <laughs> just saying right. mount it up high you might not have to worry about it the big thing is that using this setup you know, you're you're not doing two trolling motors on the back and running to the far end of the lake and then the wind picks up and you're stuck there and you're walking through the woods with batteries. I've seen that happen. I've lived it. You've lived <laughs> it. Well <laughs> I've lived quite a lot actually. You you will not run out of power and, and not see it coming a long way away right. with this. That's you're amazing. gonna you're gonna have that range knowledge. And Man, you're gonna that have to come oh. in handy Sunday during that rainstorm. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of range with it. I guess that about wraps it up for us tonight. Um, it's getting dark. Trains are coming by. and uh, <laughs> But uh, we've got our jack plate, our Atlas jack plate installed. Our Torquedo set up. And Jeff ran us through what this thing does. So really cool motor. And dude, thanks, man. That's a lot of information. Yep. Really awesome motor. That's and, an amazing motor. Yeah. So what's next, Dave? And get everything ready to start wiring up. Every, as long as we have everything in here. The stereo is here now. We can just wire everything up. and after the plumbing. That's it, man. So when you good? Soon? Soon. Soon? Soon. All right. All right, guys. Again, guys, thanks for following along with the boat build project. Stick around right here. A little sneak peek of our demo run. This is the first time we put the boat in the water. We got to test out our live well and our plumbing. We also ran our Torquedo for the first time. Got to see what this thing can do in the water. It's insane. Uh, we're out here on Mike's Lake, July 4th weekend. Check out Mike's reaction. It's priceless. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> oh my god. Initial thoughts, Brian? Dude, that thing is amazing. It should be illegal. That is too sick. Oh. Dude, watch this. That's insane. Give it it all. I love the noise. I know. It's like, it's just like. <laughs> oh my god. Right? Dude. Oh my god, dude. Electric. <laughs> wow. Success, dude. You are clearly the fastest boat in South Jersey. I win. I won. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, it's got a kill switch. Dude. To keep it when the children get around. In addition to the tiller throttle back there, I've also got Torquedo's remote throttle on the front deck. And what that allows me to do is when I'm out here fishing by myself, I can be on the front deck going down the bank with my foot on the foot control. I want to get somewhere fast. All right, we just got done the demo run of the Torquedo 2.0 cruise on the tracker PF-16. And um, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to say. I've, I've fished out of an aluminum boat here in Jersey. It's almost all electric only. And this is this is our life. This is what we fish out of for most of our lakes. I've never been on a, on a, on a boat, electric only boat this fast in my life. It's kind of ridiculous. So thumbs up to the test run. As far as speeds, um, Shifting some weight around, doing some different things. We were around five and a half, six and a half. I think we can touch seven miles an hour, but you know, for, for what we were doing today, we're still trying to get, get it broken in and get used to, you know, get used to things. But it's, it's amazing, it really is.